Hello YouTubers, my name is NixV and today we will be once again talking about this skates. Power slide super cruiser next. So here they are. I've already have a full review of Power Slide Next Super Cruiser on my channel, but there were some problems with the audio in it, and a lot of people asked me to make a new version. So there will be two parts in this video. One will be my small feedback on this skate after one and a half year of usage, and the second part will be my first initial review with the enhanced audio track and some small corrections. So they look really scratched right now, very used skates, but still quite solid and no serious problems in them for the moment. You can see the scratches here, here you can see that toe protection has almost gone and the best thing is that I can change it and buy another one it's the question of about 13 bucks i think no problems with the boot also the frame is still as solid as it was i of course changed the wheels the wheels were power slide spinner and uh, they lasted pretty good for about half a year taking into account that i was skating in snow in mud and rain it's quite a good result now I'm using Power Slide Infinity Wheels. Yeah, and they are also pretty good. Talking about the liner, the liner is still looking pretty well. It's a little bit dirty, but there are no holes in it. If you have seen my review on my previous skates, Fila NRK BX, after five months of usage, there were some deep holes in the liner and so on. This is still good. Of course, it came a little bit loose. And if in the beginning of my using Power Slide Next, I had to move out the insole, now I'm skating with an insole and I don't have any pressure points or something else. Funny thing is that if you are going to keep your skates in a car, like I do, for example, and the nights are cold, it will be quite difficult for you to put this skate on in the morning because this memory foam it becomes more hot from the cold temperature so yeah there is a problem with that one but it is my fault that's not a problem of power slide now let's talk about the problems there are some problems and the main problems are with with the buckles and some screws you can see this screw is a little bit worn right now and there were some problems it unscrews during the usage and i think i'm a lucky guy that i didn't lost it and the whole this strap these screws are not very very reliable this one also you can see it's worn right now and the problem with this with the buckles that i've been talking about initially that's a big problem because you can't really close it when it went out you can't really close your boot after that and you have to put it back with some force and i'm afraid that finally this little thing will be broken the second buckle is okay everything is fine except for these screws that have the tendency to unscrew the laces the laces are pretty good you can see that they of course has lost their ends but that's the problem with all the laces i think that's all i showed you all the main issues and now it's time to go back to my initial review First of all, they look great. They look different from other free skates and that's awesome. But that's not only the design, it actually comes from functionality. Let's at first look at the small new features. This imitation of sole plate. I am not an aggressive skater, so I don't know if it really works. All that I can say is that I can stay on it. If you are an aggressive inliner, 
write in the comments what do you think about it. Is it really useful? We also got this big slider and it's a very nice thing. You can see how I've already scratched it. I like to slide with the boot after clumsy jumps, so I can replace it in future. Also, we got here the cuff mounting that could be adjusted. Some cuff rockering, and that is also a great innovation. You can adjust not only the height of the boot, but also the tilt of it. It can really help to avoid corns or bruises on the ankles. And the main feature is of course Trinity mounting. It's the first hard boot skates with Trinity. These three points of mount allow boot to be closer to the wheel and to the ground correspondingly. Power slide states that with Trinity mounting the filling for 3x110 is almost the same as for 4x80. I don't think so. You can see that the difference in height is still quite big. I was skating in 4x84 rollerblade fitness skates not a long time ago, and I think that the feeling is much closer to that. What Trinity also gives is an enhanced power transfer. Maybe it's some kind of placebo effect, but I can really feel that the skate is a continuation of my foot. I can control the slightest movements of the blade, and that's cool. We got the aluminum frame here. It could also be adjusted a little bit. You can move it to the front or to the back, and to the sides also. The length is 243 mm. That's the standard length for 4x80, for example. So you can see that there is some distance between the wheels. It affects a little such things as stair skating, for example. It becomes a little bit trickier, but not too much. And that is a standard practice for 110 three wheelers. The frame is the same, but the wheels are bigger, what makes them less maneuverable but more stable. At least the flat, not rocker setup. For example, it's harder to fall back on them. You have to cross that line of balance. The maneuvering on one foot is also harder but it's stable. The situation will definitely change if you will use rocket setup with the smaller wheels on the sides or will wait for the natural rockering to appear. The center wheel becomes a one pivot point that makes them very maneuverable, but you will lose some part of stability. So it's up to you to decide what you want more. You can rotate the wheels periodically to avoid natural rockering to be more stable or otherwise wait for it to be more maneuverable. But even with the initial flat setup they are pretty agile. There are not the slalom model, 3x100 will be much better for slalom, but for urban skating they are agile enough. Slalom turns become tricky on them, because the wheels gaining their speed much faster, and you have to control them much more. The wheels are power slide spinner with ABEC 9 wicked bearings in them. Bearings roll good, absolutely enough for city skating. The wheels are 88A harness, and that is good for everyday skating, for making some slides, jumps and so on. I can even make a one wheel on them for a very short period of time. But they become very slippery on wet surfaces. I'm a big fan of skating during the rain, but on these wheels it was a very difficult challenge. The other thing is vibration. Harder wheels and Trinity Mountain transfer power better, but they also transfer back the vibrations from the road. Small obstacles could be eaten by big wheels, but don't wait that you will be skating smooth on cobblestones. That's not. You will feel it. The good thing is that big wheels roll on hard surfaces much better. The risk of stuck wheel is minimal and the flow is amazing. I've noticed that big wheels make the uphill easier. You simply have to make less moves, because each stride is long on them, and hence spending less efforts. These skates have my Fit Fat Boy liner, very comfortable liner with soft padding. I think it's even too soft. It feels more like in some fitness skates. I mean, if you want to look cool. And power slide next are definitely made for those who wants to look cool. You have to suffer. The way to greatness is paved with the tiles of suffering. But luckily PowerSlide thought about it also. I've been using the official PowerSlide size table. I've measured my foot according to the procedure also described on their website. I found out that my foot is somewhere in the middle between 40 and 40 thirst size. 
What was surprising, because I always used 42, but the measuring showed that and I've ordered 40, 41. They got the innovative my feet dual sizing. And know what? They are small. Not the tragically, dramatically small, but I can feel the boot pressing with my big toe. I have to hold my toes like this. I can't show my clothes actually. Luckily, I almost don't feel it while skating. The boot is heat moldable also. I will put some tutorials on heat molding in the description. So I heat molded it at 80 degrees. I took out the insoles and now it's okay. What I really want to say is that you have to be very careful if you order by web. If you have an opportunity to try them at some store, do it. Anyway, with full fixation of a foot, I feel myself comfortable enough to perform all my usual stuff on skates and try something new. The fixation, by the way, is provided by the laces and two buckles. There are waxed laces that you can lace the boot with and then lace also the top of the liner. That gives very nice fixation, but it's very difficult to take the skate off with such a type of lacing. Or you can lace only the bottom and fix with the buckles. One heel fixation 45 degrees buckle and one on the top of the cuff. For the top fixation you will probably need to cut off that closing part of the boot, depending on your ankle size. And maybe that plastic strap also. There is one weak thing here. These buckles are fixed with only one bolt, and sometimes it goes out and it is pretty difficult to put it back. The heel buckle has a possibility of fine adjustment. But don't tighten it too much, it can cause some pain in the arch of the foot. So finally, our site created a very good skate with a lot of different features and some disadvantages. But now what? Disadvantages could be eliminated. Advantages will stay forever. My main feeling about that skates is that they roll. They roll great. On the grass. On gravel. On bad Will power slide next be the solid part of our future? I think yes, but there is a lot of place in our future for other brands, skates and techniques. And I hope we all will be the part of that inline skating future. So see you Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the grey bell. I will return with new blogs, reviews and tutorials. Keep rolling!